In today's video I'm going to be comparing all of my four season tents, the Hilleberg Solo, the Terra Nova Southern Cross 1 and the Tarp Tent Scarp 1. This is probably my most requested video. I get loads of questions asking how does the Scarp compare to the Southern Cross? How does the Southern Cross compare to the Hilleberg Solo? Well I love all of these tents so I'm not going to choose my favourite in this video but I'll show you all the specs, compare some of the features so you can make a decision on which one of the three you'd prefer. I've had the Hilleberg Solo the longest so we'll start there. So this is the red label version and currently retails at around £800. Without the footprint it weighs 2.4 kilos. I've got the footprint on mine so I'm not sure what it is. 2.7 something like that. It's got 9mm DAC poles and the fly is made of Hilleberg's own 1200 Curlon Sil Nylon. Southern Cross 1 comes in a little bit cheaper. RRP is £600. So this weighs in at 1.69 kilos and the fly is made from Terra Nova's watershed silicon coated polyurethane. It's got its own Terra Nova reflex poles there just over eight and a half millimeters thick and last but not least we've got the tarp tent scarp one this currently retails at 459 pounds however if you want the additional cross poles that brings the price up to 499 pounds these poles are nine millimeters thick and the fly on this is 30 denier sil nylon i'll start off with some of the features on the outside of the tent so the Hilleberg Solo is completely freestanding. You don't need any pegs at all to set it up. You slide the colour coded poles into the reinforced sleeves and then just clip on the fly, work your way up to the top and then you finish off by pulling over the top cover and then just clipping that into place. So being able to set your tent up from the ground upwards is really good for windy conditions. I haven't brought enough pegs with me to stake out everything properly so they've all just got four in each. Um, but the Hilleberg is superb when it comes to guy lines. The top guys just wrap around the poles. This gives it even more strength. And then you would just guy these out. And there's two on each pole. So it makes it really, really sturdy in, in some of the toughest conditions. This tent is really designed for mountain expeditions. Um, so it's overkill for most of the time here in the UK. But it is a quality bit of kit and it seems to be the go-to now for a lot of wild campers. Everything on this tent is super reinforced and made to last. Um, you know, things down to these reinforced pole sleeves, they're much stronger than the other two tents and any other tents that I've seen really on the market. The Curlon 1200 material is pretty indestructible. I don't think you can tear it with your hands. You might be able to if you're Jeff Capes, but uh, I definitely can't anyway. So the same as the Hilleberg Solo, the Southern Cross can be set up completely without any temp pegs at all. Put the red pole in first, it just slots into one of these little eyelets and then you start to clip the fly to the pole. And the blue pole goes through a, a reinforced sleeve and that gives you your head space inside the tent. Finish off by putting on the rest of the fly clips. And then to finish off you can guy the tent out, however you know, the guy lines on these are nowhere near as robust as the Hilleberg. It does have additional loops on the panels that you can peg it out and although it's not as tough as the Hilleberg, it copes really well in strong winds and it'll cope with 99% you know, of UK conditions. So the top tent Scarp 1 is a little more complicated to put up. You can set it up without the cross pole so it just becomes a single hoop tent. You slide the pole through the yellow sleeve and you do have to pull out and peg down each corner of the tent. So once the cross poles have been added you can, if you want to, remove the tent pegs and then it will become a freestanding tent. You can possibly set it up without the pegs by putting the cross poles in, but I've never tried it and it would be quite a faff, I imagine. The cross poles just fit into the eyelets and they hold onto each corner with a little bit of Velcro and then you just clip on uh, the fly to the poles on the outside. So the first thing you might want to know is the difference in the pack size. So. The Hilleberg it weighs the most and it is considerably larger when it comes to the pack size. But if you separate the poles you can actually squash the tent down so you can get it uh, to a much smaller package to fit inside your rucksack. The Terra Nova is by far the smallest pack size. Again just keep the poles separate and then you can squash it down to a really compact size. So it's great if you want to be using a smaller backpack. The Scarp 1 is the lightest tent without the cross poles. 
shade over 1.3 kilos but the end sections have got built-in carbon fiber poles which you can take out but it is a real faff so um, it means that you can't really squash your tent down to a small package. It is quite slim though so it can easily fit in one of the side pockets on one of your rucksacks. So before we move on a quick thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring the video today. So I first set up my Squarespace website a couple of years ago and now we use it every single day. It makes running our online shop a breeze. It's really easy to upload new products, update stock and process the orders that come in every day. If you've never had a website before, Squarespace makes it really easy. They've got lots of ready-made templates that you can easily customize to get that unique look of your own. And if you get a little bit stuck, they've even got some video tutorials. So if you want to start up an online business of your own, or if you just want to share your photos with your friends and family, then I definitely recommend the Squarespace website. If you click the link in the description below or head over to squarespace.com forward slash Paul Messner, you'll get a totally free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So it does get quite humid here in the UK. So that does mean that tents suffer from condensation. So we'll have a look at some of the venting options on these three tents. So starting with a solo, I'll actually lift this back just so you can see it a little bit better. There is a big vent here that can be opened up however you want. And when that's covered over, it is protected from the rain. With this being a proper four season tent, the fly goes right down to the floor so you get virtually no ventilation underneath. So the only other option you've got really is just to open up the door and roll it back. You do have to be a little bit wary in sideways wind as rain can actually get through there on occasions. But I've only had that happen to me a couple of times. The Terra Nova has two little vents on either end so that allows airflow to go in through from one end of the tent and then out through the other. Again, the tent fly goes right down to the floor so you get virtually no ventilation that way. So that only leaves opening the door. So you can open it from the top if you just want a little bit of air to get in. Or unzip it and let some air in. The Scarp is by far the best ventilated tent. So it's got um, little windows at the top here. There's one at the other side too. You can also unzip these ends. There's a little bungee on here, look, which you can clip over there and that allows airflow into your tent. You can on this tent also loosen the tension on here. And then you can lift this up and there's a little bungee and a hook on the other side um, which holds the fly in place and that way you are getting extra ventilation under there. Although you can tighten this pretty low, the fly doesn't go right down to the floor. So that gives really good airflow. It does mean that in winter that this tent is not quite as warm as the other two. However, I found you get much less condensation. The guy ropes on the scarp are very short. I might actually upgrade these so they're a little bit longer. And these side guys didn't actually come with a tent. <laughs> For that kind of money you would expect that they did come with it, but it cost me a couple of quid to get one and then I just fitted it myself. So I've used this with and without the cross poles in windy conditions and it coats with everything really well. Moving on to the doors, the Hilleberg has a storm flap which covers the zip to keep it waterproof. Terra Nova is the same, quite a big storm flap on there. The Scarp doesn't have a flap, has a waterproof zip instead, which works really well. But the big bonus on the Scarp is it's got a door on the other side as well. So that means two entrances, two vestibules for storing your gear and cooking. That's about it for the outside. Um, one thing to mention though is how much these tents flap, so the, the Hilleberg is quite flappy, so wind gets under there, makes for a right noise in the middle of the night. The Scarp is a really quiet tent, however, if you're not using the cross poles, you know, these um, straps do flap and bash against the tent, so a bit like beating a drum. And also, you know, you're better off tying these off a little bit, because in the wind, these will flap and you can hear them. Southern Cross doesn't flap very much at all. I really like this tent. It's really sturdy in the wind, um, partially down to it's got a bit lower profile. All right, let's get them open and see what it's like to live in these tents. Scarp, when you open the door, you want to tie it back. There's these little Velcro things, which a bit rubbish if, uh, if I'm honest with you. Um, they could do with upgrading to proper toggle. They do the job but it's not great. It's the same on this inner one as well. Um, so big wide doors but you've just got a little bit of bungee that you have to tie in a half hitch. 
It's almost like those little things are an afterthought and they've just chucked them on at the last minute. They're tearing over. That has one of these little clips that you clip onto um, the pole. There's another one there, look. Which is okay, and I do quite like the idea. However, it's quite difficult to, to get them on and off when you're inside the tent. It's just something that you have to get used to. The Hilleberg Again, that just rolls up. And then they've got a bungee and a toggle. Which is all right, unless your fingers are cold. One more thing to note on the Hilleberg. It's got these big metal zips, which in wind, that's what you're hearing all night. So it might be worth taping them up. So the inner on this, you could open it all the way up if you want to. So there's a central zip and then two zips that go from the bottom. So this is a mesh panel. However, you can, I've got mine rolled up. You can undo it and there's another zip inside so you can zip that up and that makes this a full solid panel for in really cold conditions. Again, that rolls up and it's got a bungee. Terra Nova, let's roll that one up. And they've got little toggles and loops. I like the bungees better, if I'm honest, on the Hilleberg. So the vestibule on the Hilleberg is probably the smallest. You can fit your rucksack in there and there's a little bit of space for setting up your cook set. So although it's a smaller tent, um, the Southern Cross has actually got a bigger storage area, so more room for your boots and stuff and your cooking gear here. But the winner for the storage base has got to be the Scarp one in my opinion. Um, so you've got this vestibule here, however, it is adjustable so you can slide this along. So you can get more uh, inner tent space and have a smaller vestibule. Or you can open it up if you've got a big frying pan. But having storage space both sides, so again, you can adjust this one as well. So it doesn't matter which way the wind's blowing. So you can, if the wind's blowing from the other side, you close that door and cook here. If the wind's blowing from this side, you close this door and cook from the other. Very, very versatile. So there's a couple of decent sized pockets there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Look, definitely space to hang your lantern. That's where it went to. Um, <laughs> Some little flaps there for closing off your ventilation. Yeah, and a reasonable amount of storage space here. The Hilleberg, it's got two pockets there. Um, I've got my washing line up still. A couple of little loops where you could put a lantern. I do like that this door opens all the way. So if you're going to be spending a lot of time in one of these tents, then you're going to want to know how much room's in them. Well, we'll start with a solo again. So the head height in this tent is 95 centimetres and it's 220 centimetres from end to end. So from this point here to that point there is 105 centimetres. Um, realistically from here to here, I think you've only got about 63 centimetres of usual, uh, usable space. So I've got a few inches to the top here. So there's not loads of clearance. So if you're over you know, six foot, six foot two, something like that, I don't know if this is the one for you. In fact, I don't know if any of these are the ones for you. When you add your sleeping pad underneath you and things like that, it's soon going to be you know, running out of headroom. So there's enough room for my large sleeping pad in there and then there's a little bit of space for storing a bag with um, battery packs and all that kind of stuff. So yeah quite comfortable in there you know if you spend there a long time so the southern cross is the smallest of the lot so it's got headroom of only 85 centimeters it's still 220 long although from there to there's 100 centimeters and by the time you've got your, your sleeping pad in you've not got loads of extra space so I'm a short ass and I'm touching the top there um, so this tent is more for you know if you're wanting to get your head down so when you're laid down, you are quite close to this netting as well. So um, if you get a little bit claustrophobic, then maybe you want to look at a larger tent. The Southern Cross 2 is probably the, 
the ideal compromise because it's a really robust tense but um, yeah, you need that little bit more space than this especially in winter anyway um, but you know, if you want something that packs small it's going to be really strong in the wind but you're, you're only going to be sleeping in it this is perfect and then last up we have got this palace considering this tent weighs the least it's got by far the most space inside so the carbon poles at the end hold everything up nicely which means you've got quite a bit of room here the sleep area is actually a tiny bit shorter 218 centimeters but it's 132 centimeters wide so according to scarp you can get two definite three quarter sleeping pads in this so even though it's a one person tent if you're cozy um, you can get two people in here it's got the most headroom of all three of my tents it's got 99 uh, centimeters so and with the extra vestibule space um, you, you can keep all your wet stuff outside all your bags and everything you know, it, being in here is a really comfortable place to be um, no matter what it's like outside it does have a little bit of mesh here so it's not completely sealed like the the Hilleberg is so if you just sat about in really cold conditions you might need to keep your jacket on for a little bit there's them pockets I'll tell you about not brilliant but it does the job I think it's pretty much it for all the specs I'll give you a little bit of a roundup point out a few of things that I've struggled with so the Hilleberg is by far the most expensive at around 800 pounds but it's also the strongest tent out of the three of them it weighs the most but everything is reinforced the guy lines are brilliant so you're never going to get blown off the hill it's like the Rolls Royce of solo tents but it does flap about a bit and you will have to get used to dealing with condensation because it is a bit of a magnet for it the Scarp one is the cheapest of the three at $500 but be wary when ordering from the USA you will get stung with some kind of import taxes and duty so that could be up to £100 depending on what spec you get so the Scarp is the only one that will need seam sealing so I got mine seam sealed at the factory but that added $40 to the cost the whole point of a tent is that it's waterproof uh, in my opinion it should come as standard but it doesn't if you're using the cross poles then this is the hardest of the three to set up um, but if you're just using the single hoop then it's pretty straightforward the amount of space that you get is brilliant and it's by far the best tent when it comes to keeping away the condensation some things on it look a little bit cheap and nasty like these velcro bits um, you would think they'd add something a little bit more robust but even so it's a brilliant tent and it's by far the most comfortable to spend time in out of all the three of them i think the southern cross one is a very good looking tent it's as strong as an ox so you can pitch it up in some terrible conditions and it's going to keep you well protected it's cheaper than the solo and i have seen it as low as 420 quid but with it being the smallest of the tents you've got to spend 14 hours in there <laughs> it's not as comfortable place to be as me other two so um, ideal for windy conditions where you've got a good amount of daylight and um, where you haven't got to be tucked away in your tent all night um, but you know, if you're spending long hours in here I prefer a little bit more room if there's anything I've missed then be sure to ask in the comments below one last thing I haven't got the original tent pegs for either of these but these eastern ones did come with the tarp tent but I can't remember whether I had to pay extra for them uh, these are brilliant however the ones that come with the Southern Cross are rubbish and the ones that come with the Hilleberg are not great either I don't know about you but I just have one set of pegs that goes with me no matter what the tent is anyway that's it for this one which one's your favorite tent let me know in the comments below thanks for watching and I'll see you next time